We are QOTD and you're watching the question of the day show, the game show that lets you be on the air and you can join us on the air by recording your own video answers to our awesome daily questions. Hi, JJ. Hi, Reed. Hi, Trish. Hello. Hi, Keith. Hey, everybody. Today we are answering QOTD question number 23, which is hometown blues. We asked our fans, where is your hometown and what do you miss most or least about it? We've all got a hometown, no matter where you live in the world. And regardless of whether or not you stayed or if you moved to the other side of the country or even the world, um, it's a big part of who you are and a big part of the story of your life. So we want to know what are some of your favorite memories or what are some of the things that haunted you forever? <laughs> we already received a ton of video answers, but I wanted to share one fan answer that pretty closely reflects how I feel. So from Cumming, Georgia, here is Parker's answer. I'm from Cumming, Georgia, which is like a super boring suburb and there isn't a lot to do there. But I do miss getting to pick up my friends and drive around aimlessly or walk around the Walmart or go to Waho at 2 a.m. I really miss when that was my idea of a fun night. So I grew up in a really big city, but about halfway through high school, I moved to a small town also, and I totally share Parker's experiences. Backroading, mall tripping, just kind of making your own fun when there's not a lot to do around. So her answer really took me back. Yeah, and I think that's a staple of a lot of people's youth. Like, even if you were in a bigger city, you, uh, when you're high school age, there's only so much that you legally can do. So you got to make fun where you have it. And some of my fondest memories come from the passenger seat of my friend's cars, just screaming out music, driving on the highway. So totally relate, Parker. I... I, I we're sort of like diminishing the value of those things, I guess. I guess not you so much, Reed, but you were Trish. And and I'm envious of that. That small town experience where you know everybody, you got lots of friends, like you know, like let's just say the cops come and bust you for whatever it is you're doing, and you like you know him, you probably go to high school with his kids. You know, it's like that sense of a very tight community and family because everybody grew up together is something that I totally didn't have, but wished I had and uh, and I'm trying to recreate that for my own kids. Yeah, no, it's a really good one. I think we get into this a little later, but there's also like the whole vibe of like the small town classic suburb, like going to 7-Eleven, going to the McDonald's drive through and like seeing people that you know all over the place. It's, it's bringing me back very intensely. And I will say it's a good feeling. It's a good feeling. Yeah. I did enjoy that time. It's a shame that they don't allow dancing in your in your hometown. <laughs> Oh yeah, no, they made it illegal a little while ago. It's it's really controversial. Guys, well, I... the crash. <laughs> it's a dirty dancing reference. Those of you who uh, don't follow, it's old a movies. footloose reference. Yeah, you, you didn't even get the right reference. <laughs> uh, that's what I meant to say. It's the... It wasn't Kevin Bacon in both of those. No, that's no. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> Quick, are we got to move on before we continue the embarrassment. <laughs> well, I also, we also have an amazing answer from Star. So let's take a quick look at what she had to say. My hometown is Millersville, Georgia. It's dead in the center of Georgia. Um, what I love about my hometown is it's small, so we pretty much know everybody. And what I hate about my hometown is it's small, so we pretty much know everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, you know this is just such an amazing answer and it's so true because on the it is such like a good thing but also a bad thing because like on the one hand it's like you know everybody and it's sort of comforting to know everyone's name and to sort of just have a core group of people but at the same time it's it's sort of like is this all everyone that there is like going through middle school and high school with the same people you get to know them very well and you're like eventually you're just ready to get out into the world meet new people and see what's out there and really expand your horizons yeah anyone with small town experience knows exactly what star is talking about listen it's good to know everybody on one hand but that means everybody knows your business on the other hand. Yeah, definitely. And especially now with social media, it's like everyone's got gossip and everyone's got an opinion too. So definitely can understand why you might want to branch out and see some not so familiar faces. Yeah, maybe like the reason that I wanted and you guys are sort of 
crawling away from that hometown experience. Maybe it's part of this biological urge, like when you're young, we need to go on journey and have great adventure. And, you know, and then later on, you want to, you want to come back. But, but even though, you know, you go on this journey, um, uh, and it's sort of unique for all of us. It is kind of a shared experience, as Buckaroo Banzai says in another esoteric movie reference, uh, wherever you're going, there you are. You guys have all seen Buckaroo Banzai, right? No? Yes. Yes. Excellent. Uh, well, that movie, like myself and this next answer from Pear, are all set in New Jersey. Well, my hometown town's in Europe, and uh, I loved it. Thatch house, thatch roofed houses and a small movie theater that served food while you sat around round tables. That's all the rage now. That was happening a long time ago for me. It's, it sounds like the way I imagine some Alpine town, it's like Heidi with beer, you know? It's so exotic. Uh, but again, like as unique as his story is, it's something that I think that we all kind of share about how we're, we're starting at one place and, and that's where we begin. Uh, and it continues to shape our life's journey no matter where we go. Me, I'm an old surfer from sunny California, as you can tell from my fun shirt. Uh, and I'm not going back because I really love where I am now, but it's certainly part of, of who I was and who I became. Um, so as, uh, as they say, you might as well wear it on your sleeve. This little surfer is here if you can't see it. Nice, nice. Yeah, I think that that's very true. And it's like, no matter where you go, I feel like you also add on new parts of yourself where no matter where you move, you're always adding on, but you still have that baseline of your hometown. So it's like you can take the person out of the town, but you can never take the town out of the person. Well said. Pear, sounds like you grew up in a pretty fancy hometown. Come back. Tell us all about it. I imagine it looks something like my background, um, but I, I think we, in, um, as Americans, tend to romanticize small villages in Europe, but they're kind of similar, I imagine, to the small suburban hometowns, just with less thatch roofed houses. Maybe that's why they're so much nicer. Well, I have another answer from another fellow New Jerseyan, so let's take a look at Quinn's answer. You know, currently I'm in Los Angeles, but my hometown is back in New Jersey. And I guess the thing I miss most about it is snow. I haven't seen snow fall in about three years since I got to college. And uh, that's definitely a really nice thing in the winter, be able to go out, build a snowman, go sledding. So definitely miss that. You know, it's nice to have a reminder that you can miss it because I'm still with the snow and I like it until it sticks around until March. And then I'm like, please go away. Yeah, but then October rolls around and you're like, where's the snow? I cannot wait for it to come. Uh, especially as a person who grew up without snow. Uh, I, I love it. I look forward to it intensely every year. Yeah, so I, I was going to say. Yeah, I was going to say, there's nothing that makes you sort of appreciate snow like a person who hasn't seen snow before coming and seeing snow for the first time. Like I know in school, a lot of people that I met, a lot of my friends, they first saw snow and they first were like in a snowstorm or like in a snowfall at school at like the ripe old age of like 18 and above. So it's like it definitely like when you're constantly surrounded by it in the winter, it can definitely get to be a lot. But Sometimes it just takes a new set of eyes. Yeah. yeah, but that was a lot of my experience, by the way. And the snow, like you guys, maybe you can't appreciate the beauty and the quiet. Like when it snows, you feel like a puppy, you know, for the first time when you see it. It's just, it, it's really just a very magical experience. So, you know, stop being so cynical. Listen, it's magical and it's clean and crystally and something fresh. It's a new season. But shoveling out your car, uh-uh, not worth it. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. You know, exactly. That's that. That's the balancing act that you need is you have, oh, it's so magical. But then it's like, oh, and it's in my driveway. And now I have to spend hours shoveling it out, which is great. <laughs> it's always fun. Well, okay. I've, all these answers have really been making me think about my own answer to this question, what it would be. Because I'm still actually in my hometown, so I haven't really had a strong chance to move out permanently and really miss it. So I was wondering 
about your answers, in addition to the answers we just had, like what, uh, what do you miss most or least about your hometowns? Well, uh, I'll speak first. Um, we had this really awesome parade every year that was very hometowny, even though it was kind of a commuter town and people were very, um, you know, people didn't stay very long in the town. But, you know, but we, nevertheless, we had this July 4th parade and it was like, like right out of like a movie, like it's a wonderful life or something like that, you know, and there'd be the fire trucks would go down the street and then it would be like all the guys in the Elks Club and then it would be like, you know, people in tiny little cars or something like that. It was really funny and everybody participated. And then like everybody would line the entire route and they'd have kegs on their lawn and you would stop by and, you know, chat with people. They were your neighbors, maybe you hadn't met, but it was just this very communal experience and admittedly, it was only one day a year, but it was like a really special day. I loved it. Yeah, I shared that experience. I mentioned before, I kind of have two hometowns, but when I lived in the small town, we had the exact same uh, once a year parade, 4th of July, so much fun. But coming from Phoenix, Arizona, uh, totally different experience. But what I really miss from there is very authentic Mexican food. So like to all you New Jersey people, Chipotle, it's not Mexican. It's not. Whatever do you mean? <laughs> I know. You're telling me that a fast food chain doesn't have authentic Mexican food. <laughs> Say it ain't so. Um, I didn't move too far from my hometown, so I'm able to frequently go back, which is nice. Um, I think one of my favorite things is having like one spot that's the ice cream spot or like the one diner you know like two or three but just having kind of one spot to go to and you do run the risk of running into some people that you'd rather not see that day but that's also that's part of the fun yeah it's the part of the risk of it all well i think that's kind of what we were talking about earlier with the um small town is it's like there's always that risk that you're gonna run into people you know um but i feel like the common through line amongst like all of these answers you've been talking about is ultimately people it's like people is what you're going to miss the most. It's the thing you're most excited to get out into the world and see more of. Um, yeah, so I think, I guess that's what I, I have to look forward to. And guess also what I have to miss is just the people that I'll be able to meet and the people I will never forget. Like you yeah, but I, I want to know what it is that you guys are all, that what you guys did that you're all so afraid that you're going to really <laughs> know about that. That's uh, the, I want to hear. Honestly, it was more just about going somewhere, looking in your pajamas, you know, you're a little unkempt. You didn't think you were going to run into anybody. And then you see just everybody. Like and it, exactly. And at least in a new city, it's like, well, they're all strangers. I'll never see them again. But uh, can't say the same for good old Jersey. But in all seriousness, the nice thing about going to a new town is that you, you do get to reinvent yourself. Whereas you're, you're in your hometown, you get, kind of get stuck into the way that people thought about you in, in middle school. Yeah, exactly. And also one of the greatest things is that you can look as bad as you think you do, or you can just be as weird as you think you are. And there's 1000% somebody way weirder than you. <laughs> oh, you must live in New York. Well, yeah, we gave it away. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, if you want to join us on the air and tell us about your hometown, you can actually record your answer to today's question or any of this week's questions at beyondtheair.com. You can just click the orange record button under the 24-7 live game stream and make sure to subscribe to us on YouTube to get notified about our daily new questions. We want to hear from you. Well, thank you everyone for joining us and a very special thank you to our subscribers and to everyone who's watched, voted, and recorded so far this week. Remember, the top voted answers make it on the air for our Thursday Big Show. So make sure to vote and record at beyondtheair.com for your chance to join us. Yeah, go to beyondtheair.com and see all the answers. Uh, while you're there, just wanted everybody to know that you can also play a game called the Guess a Bid Game, and that's where you send stars to your favorite answers. It helps them get on the air, but here's the important point is that as they move up the leaderboard, uh, you move up the leaderboard too. Uh, and you can show up in our daily recap show, uh, just like these folks here. Um, so play the Guess a Bid Game and win. Well, from all of us right here at home, we are QTD and V on the air signing off, and we will see you on TV. Bye, everyone. Bye.
country road, take me home. <laughs>